Welcome to this Houdini notebook tutorial. This video is part of the Side Effects Labs notebook, and the nodes that we're looking at in this video is the Labs tree toolset. So this is a sub level node, so we can just go ahead and drop a geometry node, dive inside, and over here, the first thing that we logically want for our tree is just a trunk. So we're gonna drop a trunk over here, and by default, it's just this weird little stick type thing. A useful thing to do with this is to use a tree controller. If you plug this into second input, what it's going to allow is for many of your settings to be controlled through this tree controller. It's just way nicer than individually going into here and making all sorts of changes. And we still have the option to override some settings. For example, you can see override line noise over here. That just overrides whatever's coming in from the tree controller, right? Because under the tree controller, we also have a line noise option. So we're not gonna worry about our tree controller right now because we don't really have that much to control. It's going to come in a lot more handy when we actually start adding branches and things like that. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's use the branch tool. So labs tree branch generator, plug this in over here, and this generates branches for us. We have the option to adjust the seed value so that we end up with different branch distributions. We can control the number of branches, the branching pattern. So this is the distribution of how to actually place branches. If you do 90, you'll see a very familiar pattern or 180, they'll all just line up. And of course, if you don't want it to be so obvious, you can add angle variation. So that's all cool for adjusting that. A common thing that you may want to do is adjust where the branches begin. You can go down here to your length ramp and just slide this up. All this is going to do is tell it where along the length of the trunk do we want to start adding branches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease the length of my branches slightly. And let's also go back to our tree trunk generator. And under general, let's increase its radius. What you'll notice is that the radius that we're increasing over here on our trunk actually gets inherited by our tree branch over here. And that's because it inherits many of the values from the actual trunk. You can see over here under radius, you have the radius adjust, and this just defines how much of an inheritance there is. So if you increase this value, you'll see that it gets much thicker and it actually goes beyond the bounds of what's coming in. So we can just set that back. Now, much of the time, these are just going to be your very general branches. And this is going to mostly define the shape of your tree. From there, you would once again add another tree branch. So we can either add a new one or just duplicate this one by holding Alt, clicking and dragging. And if we just connect this up over here, you'll see that this adds a second layer of branches. Again, you'll have to change these settings over here. And then once again, we can do another one just like that. So as I mentioned, most of your shaping comes from the first level of branches, this one over here. And then these are mostly just supplementary. Now, as for leaves, we do have the leaf generator. So labs tree leaf generator. Now to generate some leaves, we need a leaf over here. So labs tree simple leaf. Um, I just wanna show you that you can actually just use something like a grid if you really want to. So we give that a size of one, plug that in, and you'll see that it just adds a grid over here. This is scaled down depending on the size that this tree leaf generator is stipulating. And this is exactly how you would use cards. Each one of these could be a card that you use to limit the geometry, right? So you can have a leaf texture on this, and that's what you would use. But if you're going for a higher resolution tree, you can use the tree simple leaf. Right? So it's a labs tool, and it'll just generate these leaves for you. This over here has some options. We can take a look at it. You can increase things like the leaf size, and it'll show up directly over here. On the tree leaf generator, you will have access to this leaf node distance. You can think of this as particle separation. Right. So how far before a new leaf is placed? By increasing this, you end up with fewer leaves. And by decreasing it, you end up with much more of these leaves. We have obviously options for things like scale variation, pruning, orientation. We can add as much randomization as you'd like. Now, the cool thing is, if we go back to our tree controller over here, we can start looking at these settings over here. For example, gravity can be applied using this over here. If you decrease the value to a negative value, it will, of course, drop the tree branches down, right? Something like that. So this is where you have all sorts of creative freedom to just play around with this and get different variations of a particular tree. When you output this, you do have two options for either just the curve output. You can see that it just gives us that over there with all of the relevant information stored on it as attributes. So if you want to get creative with this, you can use all of this for whatever you might want. For example, it does even have radius. So you could technically render this as curves. You could just take this and perhaps promote that radius to something called width, and then it would render as 
geometry. As for the other output, we just have the actual mesh over here. Often what I like to do is actually split this up. So I would take this output from the branch generator over here and then take this one over here and tell this tree leaf generator to actually delete the previous levels for me. Right, so it gives me that and that. And that allows you to just work on these individually a little bit further. Additionally, a useful thing to do for game dev is under this advanced tab, you'll see that we have the normal method. If you're using cards, you may want to go over here and just set this to spherical. So this just preps it nicely for game dev, where you want all of your normals aligned in this spherical manner. So that's all for this part. I do hope that you found this useful. I'll be seeing you soon with another video. So until then, bye.